So let me just kind of clear up some things here going forward. You know, Will's going to be our quarterback. We think that's the best opportunity for our football team right now. Ryan will progress through here this week, I, I think, and, and hopeful you know, to be a backup for us and prepare as a starter, but that's where we're at right now. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith with the head coach and you saw Mike Vrabel's press conference from earlier today where he announced that Will Levis is the Tennessee Titans starting quarterback. After Pittsburgh, you said we'll tell you something on Tuesday. You held to that. Why was this the right day to announce Will Levis as the starter? Well, it gave us the weekend to kind of think about some things and, and look at what we want to do going forward and, you know, who we want to do it with. And also, you know, the early in the week and just so that we can, you know, keep moving on and, and keep progressing and, and find a way to prepare to, uh, to beat Tampa Bay. In certain situations, it's been held, that information, for maybe a competitive advantage. Why did you decide against that and to go ahead and make the announcement public? Well, I just felt like for, for everybody involved and so that we can move past it and, you know, just, you know, make, make it clean. And, you know, again, I don't know you know I mean, hold it. And, I, you know, it's the decision I made. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to hold it in this day and time. Not, too. Nobody's try, I mean, we're just made a decision and, and went with it and felt like, you know, hopefully now the, the focus can be on our preparation and, and how, how do we find a way to win a game on the road? You had an extra day today. What did you guys <clears throat> get done on the practice field? Well, I tried to get out, get moving around. I thought the conditioning was good. I thought uh, just some football movements, individual stuff, and then they were able to, to run a bunch of plays uh, that hopefully can, can jumpstart us here into the to preparation tomorrow. And Tampa Bay is the opponent this week. Tomorrow, the normal preparation week begins just as per usual? Yeah, and, and we just were able to use today as, uh, you know, getting a jump start on personnel and what we feel like are going to be the keys. And, um, you know, as many looks as they give us on defense, it'll be critical, and then we'll have to uh, tighten some things up on defense and, and special teams. All right, the Mike Vrabel six-pack presented by Seat Geek, some of the best offensive plays from Thursday night in Pittsburgh. Start off with uh, a first and 23 at your own five, 29 yards to DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, Hop does a good job of getting inside the backer or wrapping in there behind him. Uh, well, well placed ball, good protection uh, there in our own end zone. Um, you know, putting that out in a spot where Hop and, and love how he catches that out in front of his eyes. You know, those little things that, that make me happy. Um, and then able to, to get us a, a good gain in the middle of the field and, and try to get that drive started. DeAndre Hopkins, four catches, 60 yards in the ball game. Nick Westbrook Akine had just one catch in the ball game, but it was a big one as it goes for 23 yards. Yep, third and long. And these are critical, and, and you know, Will's able to, to fight off a little bit of the pressure and, and, and deliver the football there to, to Nick off his back foot. So um, would like to try to stay out of those situations, but uh, you know, it's a good job of finding Nick down there uncovered. and. You know, he's able to, to secure the catch and, and, and keep the chains moving for us. In the two games last week, Kyle Phillips had seven catches for 92 yards, including four for 68 at Pittsburgh. Here's one for 24 yards at the end of the first half. Yeah, it does a nice job of just working his way down the seam and being available. And, you know, the, these are opportunities here that you know, happen really quick in, in two minute. And uh, again, he comes back later in this drive and, and does some nice things as well. But um, you know, it's good to see Kyle be able to continue to help us, you know, clean pocket, and we're going to be able to throw the football. Protection overall, four sacks on the night, but there were some good opportunities to throw there the football. There were. And, I mean, I think that you're going to, um, you know, they give, give them a lot of credit, you know, that for pass rushing. And, you know, you get into that two-minute mode or you get into some, some passing situations or, uh, 
you know, you hold the ball for a second, whatever it may be. But I felt like there were some good opportunities that, uh, you know, we were able to progress through and, and find guys down the field. All right, let's take a look at this screen pass, which turned out to be an excellent play for the Titans. Levis under pressure, but he finds Derrick Henry. Yeah, and I think sometimes those are the best screens are the ones that look like they're going to be a sack and you get guys rushing. Uh, Derrick does a great job of securing that football uh, up in the air. And, you know, we're, we're close. You know, and I hate to always say that, but, you know, we've gotten Derrick uh, going. And, and so we'll take our chances here. And hopefully we're trying to finish on the second level and get those blocks that can, that can spring them. Uh, he was close on a couple runs, and, and I'm confident that that those are going to be home runs here soon. So the completion to Henry for 23. Later in the ball game, the Titans are backed up in a situation where the stadium was absolutely going crazy coming out of a timeout. Big completion to Traylon Burks to quiet him down. Yeah, and you talk about the protection, and there's the ability to get Traylon all the way over on the other side um, for, for a nice gain for an X play. Uh, backed up there in our own end zone. You know, you can see as long as we got a good clean pocket, um, you know, Traylon progresses all the way through, clears the underneath coverage, and Will gives him something to catch. How is Traylon doing right now, Mike? Well, he's still in protocol, so uh, I would say that that's not uh, great all in all. Uh, again, under the circumstances, I would say that he's doing uh, okay, considering what, uh, what we all saw. So. Still working his way through protocol, and you know he'll take his time and, and at his pace, and, and however he responds, he responds. Last play we're going to show comes from the last drive of the ball game for the Titans. Seems like every catch Chris Moore makes is a big play. This one certainly was for 29 yards. Yeah, and hopefully you know Chris will get some more opportunities this week. Um, but but again, good opportunity right there, going up, catching the football, and and getting us a big big chunk there to, to give us a chance there at the end. Chris Moore is just a guy who knows how to play football regardless of what you ask out of. Yeah, and on a short week, I mean, he went home, his wife had a baby, came back. I mean, really proud of, you know, his ability to handle things away from here and, and his his family, which is so so important to all of us, uh, and then coming back here and being ready to go uh, in Pittsburgh. Did have some good chunk plays offensively. I know didn't finish the way you wanted on certain drives. But those make driving the football easy when you could pick up, or easier, sure. when you could pick up 25, 21, 23 yardage like that. Yeah, I mean, as long as we can continue to stay balanced and run the football, I think those opportunities are going to be there um, down the field, you know, being able to run the football and marry the, the play pass game and uh, continue to try to move the football down the field uh, when we have opportunities. All right, when we come back on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek, we go to the Vrabel Strader for what was some kind of defensive play by Aziz Alshire. That's coming up next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the BetMGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Time to go to the Vrabel Strader. Let's see what we got here right, this I, week, buddy. I want to show you th I, this play. We were looking at this over and over again. Aziz Alshire, who's right here in the red shoes. Can't one miss of, him. One of the top tacklers in the NFL. Yep. But on this play, he does an unbelievable job covering the pass. Yeah. Well, here we are in third and eight, and, and we know when we get into these of situations, you know, we've got to win. You know, our, our percentage has been really good here. It's got to be better on third and three to six, third and two to six. Uh, we get that. But this is an opportunity to let these four guys up front here rush, uh, going to mix in some zone coverage, uh, you know, where we roll the corners up, safety is go to the half field, and we'll be able to play with a middle runner here. So now he's got three receivers to his left. He's responsible for two and three if they were to go vertical. Okay, so here, let's take a look here at what we got and making sure now we understand. So as you work your way through, so there's your, there's your zone coverage, right? Guys are pass rushing. You see an inside pass rush game here, looking to chip Arden. Okay, the corner's rolled up, playing with vision. We're at the sticks. And Aziz is getting ready now. You can see he's got depth. He's got speed over here at three. So he knows he's got Austin. Correct. And so now, as this thing works its way down the field, okay, what you've done, what Pittsburgh has done is they've tried to create levels. Okay, they've got three different levels here. And I'll try to get that explained here. So now they've got a guy short of the sticks, a guy past the sticks. 
and then they're trying to run a guy through the middle. Teams normally try to play some cover two, right, in that down and distance. Right. And, and you just got to be able to protect for the deep shot. And what we've done here now is Aziz is running. He's not in phase. He can't look back for the football. So he's trying to time this thing up and go through the pocket. And that's what we talk about right here of going through the pocket where the quarterback and the ball, is, excuse me, where the ball is going to the hands, find the hands, and he's going up through the pocket. And you can see a, a tremendous play. Told him we'll get a better view here. Now, we, we, we do need a little bit of depth. Okay, we need to now do a better job of reading the quarterback here on the backside and getting involved, right? We need to play with better vision, okay? So we're not leaving him out to dry, but a fantastic job of running, of getting into phase, and I guarantee the receiver's eyes got big. Austin's eyes got big, and that's when Aziz was able to match that hand and go through the pocket. Is his trigger seeing Austin put his hands out? Is that when he knows he needs yeah, to throw? Yeah, I mean, okay. when guys, you know, I mean, are going to able to get their eyes get big and the, the, their hands get ready to go catch. No, we're running like heck. We're, we're out of phase there, right? Because the third and eight, we're not normally looking there for that shot. Okay, continue to get Jeff here. Again, we got to keep working on our ball, our ball disruption. We're trying to get that hand up in the air, okay, trying to get that hand to, to match the quarterback's throwing hand and try to get it up in the air to affect the throw. That's good stuff, Coach. When we come back, Epic Western Spotlight, another pass rusher, Arden Key, wired for sound at the team picture a few days ago. Wait till you see this. Stay with us. Welcome back. Each year, generally in late October, the entire squad gets together for the team picture that will be the photo record of the 2023 Tennessee Titans. Well, that happened recently, and it can be mass chaos at times, no doubt about it. There's a lot going on. So we decided to contribute to the chaos a little bit and put a microphone on outside linebacker Arden Key, who is a serious talker, a serious stir-it-up guy, and seriously fun. It is this week's Epic Western Spotlight. Testing, testing, three, two, three, two, three, two. <laughs> then, then, now you're finna get smacked for real because you mic'd up. How about that? Oh, you mic'd up for real? Hey, my mama wasn't like that. <laughs> I'm just scared, book. It's all good. I'm going right behind you, Art. I'm right here. I know, I'm right behind you. Oh, come on through. But this is scary, bro. That's a lot of weight on top. <laughs> Y'all look good, boy. Ah, what's up? The microphone on? Yeah, the mic. <laughs> Man of the hour. The man of the present. <laughs> one, 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 two, three. We're getting new uh, positional group photos at the 50 to get them home. I'm good on that. I'm good. We're going to go to the locker room. Oh, low. Low, I'm a daughter. <laughs> D-line, OLB, OLB inside. We neck. We neck. Oh, God, we neck. Back up. Don't worry. Great. Don't worry. I got it on all under control. I got it up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. We next. No, you're not. We next. No, you're not. Who next? Watch, watch what I do. Man. Nah, bro. We next. That's it. I bet you're not. I'm going to show y'all how to put y'all foot down. Back up. Oh, yeah. All oh, you need is two clicks. We gone. All right, let go, y'all. Come on. Come on. I see how it is. I see how it is. I'm the only one that ain't scared. I know. Who next? Who next? Man, we'll probably be two, two. They were scared. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Y'all ready to go next? Let go. Hey, what time it is? Oh, we got Curtis to my time. It's time to go. Ah, oh, let's go, go. We next. Click, 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 go. Oh. Yeah. We out, we out. That is an epic Western spotlight. That made my night. <laughs> I didn't know Arden, I didn't know Arden was mic'd up. It was perfect. <laughs> Does he ever stop talking? No. And so it was perfect. Like, they was trying to jump in there. They didn't have their group ready. I was trying to organize everything to get these guys out of here as quickly as possible and start the walkthrough. I didn't know he was mic'd up. It just made it perfect that he wanted to keep going next. And I was like, I got this handled. Trust me. <laughs> do you have to do that with him a lot? Mostly. Yeah, most days. <laughs> but you like that, don't you? No, he's great. I love his spirit. He's got great spirit, great energy. It's been, uh, been fun to coach. And as you want to see him come on over the last 
eight, nine games, what do you want to see from Arden Key? Well, I want to see everybody on defense. Make the plays they're supposed to make. Be prepared. Um, play relentless. Uh, affect the quarterback. Tackle the guy when, when they hand it off. Um, you know, affect the quarterback. We, we, we got to get back to, to doing that, and that, that creates turnovers. You know, that affecting the quarterback creates turnovers. When we come back, kids ask Coach Vrabel. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Stay with us. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek, continues. And it is time now. For the best part of the show. For really the best That's part it. of the show. Kids ask Coach Vrabel, let's meet Claudia. Come on, Claudia. Here we go, Claudia. Got our music. Hi, my name is Claudia and I am eight. My question is, what is the hardest part about being a coach? Oh. Tighten up. Tighten up, Claudia. Well, I think the hardest part of being a coach uh, outside of losing. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's tough. Every time you lose, it, uh, it affects you. Um, but, but I also, you know, the toughest part is just, I think, um, probably the, the, the time away, you know, the time that's, uh, that's invested here, um, away from, from your family. But, you know, we all know what we sign up for and, and we love every second of it, but certainly losing, uh, would be number one. And then, uh, you know, the, the time away, uh, during the season. What's the best part? Well, outside of winning, watching players improve and, and develop and, um, take advantage of opportunities when you work with a player and you see them develop. You know, winning will, will be the ultimate. After that, it's, it's watching players develop and improve and um, having them help the team. It's, it's like being a teacher, isn't it? Well, it is being a teacher. It's, it's being a teacher and then also um, a lot of different hats, right? You got to make a connection. You got to figure out what, what these guys need and when they need it. Uh, and, and they learn differently, they respond differently, and so it's, it's different challenges. That part of the challenge is something you really enjoy, finding that button to push. Well, yeah, and, and again, there's things that we believe in, um, and, and there's also things that you know, are, are negotiable, but there's also some things that, that are non-negotiable that we believe you have to be able to do to, to win football games. The Nissan Keys are next. How do the Titans go beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday? Find out when the Mike Vrabel Show continues, presented by SeatGeek. Inside the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek, continues with our Nissan Keys to Success. I like number one, create negative plays defensively. Not enough of those in Pittsburgh, right? No, not enough. And uh, again, it allowed them to, to stay in third and manageable uh, and continue to, to drive the football. We gave up you know, four double-digit drives. Uh, those X plays allow you to, to create third and long, which sends opportunities to, to rush and opportunity to make plays on the football uh, and, and get off the field on third down. So it all starts uh, hopefully on early downs and our ability to, to create negative plays, and hopefully we can do that. Um, in, in the play action game, this big play action team. Oh, interesting. Okay. Didn't realize that they, they do that as much as you do even. They do. They max it up and they'll throw shots and overs to, to Evans and, and, and Godwin. And, you know, that's something that they've created X plays on. Yep. All right. Let's take a look now at key number two, which is stay efficient offensively on early downs. Well, we know how, you know, the pressure that these guys can bring on third down. They've, um, you know, when teams have been able to stay ahead in the chains, third and one, two, three, uh, they've been able to extend drives statistically, uh, but when you get into the third and eight plus, you know that's where the, the, the four strong, the four weak, the different pressures, the double edge pressures, the bringing the corner and the nickel and it, bringing guys from everywhere, and so makes it difficult uh, when, when you live in those down and distances. And the safety Winfield is, is a good blitzer. Yeah, he's all, he's the, caused fumbles. He's yeah. caused three fumbles. He's got recoveries. So. Uh, they, they bring guys from everywhere. David's excellent blitzer, and, and, and so is um, White, and, and it's just then they can bring just the four down guys. All right. Key number three, talking about special teams, creating field position and momentum. Yeah, I feel like we're close here. There were some good opportunities the other day. Um, you know, I thought the return um, by, by Tajay and the, and the return, the kickoff return unit was, was great, more of that at the penalty and, and we're able to get the ball out to midfield. Um, 
we got to hit a punt return and we got to keep covering these punts and, and flip the field. Two good punters going this week and you know, two, the, the ball is, is going to be in the air uh, quite, quite long uh, if we can make them punt and if, you know, if we have to punt offensively. So these are two good punters. You worried that it's going to be nearly 90 degrees down there? Uh, worried? I don't know. I mean, it's going to be hot for everybody. We'll just have to see how the, we handle the weather and rotate guys if we have to. All right. Well, good stuff. We look forward to seeing you Thank down you. there. Titans and the Bucks this Sunday kickoff set for 12.02. We're on the air on Titans Radio, including here in Nashville on 104.5 The Zone at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown. That's Rhett Bryan's show. We look forward to hearing him and look forward to having you join us for Titans Bucks this Sunday. Thanks for being with us. Good night, everybody.